Vampire society within the world of darkness is, to say the least, a rather complex and messy affair. Whilst a vampire may parody the essence of what it means to be human, the internal society they have constructed is unlike that of which we see within the mortal world. This can be reduced down to the very language they speak and the specific terms they use for their existence of bloodlust, murder, and power struggle. The linguistics of vampire kind can be elusive, sometimes acting as slang or masked terminology to speak with fellow kindred without alerting mortal ears or Cain forbid, breaching the masquerade. Tonight, we will be going over all the key terminology vampires use within the world of darkness, from the archaic to the vulgar. So if you enjoy histories and lore from worlds unlike our own, or wish to learn more about the world of darkness, perhaps leave a like or even subscribe as it helps the channel immensely. But before we delve into this veritable dictionary of vampiric words and phrases, first a message from our sponsor. Once again, we are sponsored by World Anvil, an amazing service which helps you create wiki-style presentations for your fictional worlds and TTRPG campaigns. World Anvil is your one-stop shop for creating and refining your own unique fictional settings, with 25 different article templates at your disposal. It's an amazing tool that I've used myself on multiple occasions for GMing games, as it supports over 45 systems, including our favorite, the World of Darkness. With various unique tools which help you track character sheets, Post interactive maps and unique timelines for your own personal histories, World Anvil truly helps you forge your own unique world. So, use coupon code APOLLO at checkout for 40% off of all yearly memberships to World Anvil. The link is down in the description below, and clicking it would help out tremendously. Again, a huge thank you to World Anvil for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support the channel. The lexicon of the damned, or vampire terminology, is an extensive vocabulary employed to describe the existence of a kindred or otherwise mask, taboo, or deplorable activities with euphemisms or coded language. The list we will explore tonight will cover the core vocabulary. The full extent of vampiric words and phrases stretch far beyond this, to clan-specific terms and even the terms of individual cults or minor sects. However, the core terms are perhaps the most useful for fully understanding the foundations of vampire society. Each term will be described with its general meaning, and who in particular might deploy such language. We will traverse this list in alphabetical order, but I will provide useful chapters so you may traverse this list as you please. And perhaps one night, you may wish to use this lexicon as well, for everything here has its importance. The term alley cat is what is known as a vulgar argot, a word usually used by younger vampires as slang or an insult. An alley cat in particular is a vampire who does not have a haven and commonly resides in a temporary residence each night. The term is also commonly used to refer to a kindred who prey upon the homeless or destitute members of society. The amaranth is an archaic term which belongs to the family of old form Lexus. It is an antiquated term for diablery. The practice of a kindred draining another vampire's blood, and thus draining their soul from their corporeal form. Why a vampire would choose to do this is complex, as whilst it degrades your humanity, it provides you with the ability to lower your generation and gain abilities outside of your clan limitations. Anarchs, or more widely known as the Anarch Movement, is a term which is based in the common parlance, and it is expected of most kindred to know. An Anarch vampire is commonly associated with the wider Anarch Movement set a group of kindred which rejects the status quo of vampire society, referring mostly to the power held by elder vampires, which is often seen within the strict hierarchy of the Camarilla. Ancilla, singular, or ancillae, plural, denotes a vampire which has ascended from the rank of neonate, or otherwise the status of being a young vampire. Ancilla often occupy high-status roles within vampire society, performing duties of being aides or agents of ruling leaders within a domain. An ancilla may they ascend to this rank prematurely if their services are deemed notable enough. Whilst this may be confused with an archaic term, the very word antediluvian is so ingrained into vampiric existence, it permeates the modern vocabulary. The word refers to the so-called dreaded third generation, i.e. the vampires which founded the original clans and murdered the second generation. Autarchies, derived from the Greek autarchia, is an old term which refers to a vampire which rejects 
rejects or refuses to acknowledge the domain claim of a prince, baron, archbishop, or any individual clan or sect. Some define an autarchy as a kindred who does not wish to participate in vampire society altogether, and it is often a term employed by elder kindred of the Camarilla and the Sabbat. Banking, whilst a neologism, refers to the act of withdrawing blood from a blood bank, from either obtaining blood bags or drawing from the dying and frail patients. It is worthy of note that this practice is primarily and almost solely performed by neonates, who are young enough to find sustenance in this lesser blood. A kindred that operates these facilities to others of their own kind are known as bankers, yet the process is sometimes condemned as a breach of the masquerade. The Barons is a term which generally refers to an area of the city which is widely believed to be unfit for life. It generally oversees areas which are consumed by graveyards, warehouses, industrial wastelands, and other such deserted plains which are unfit to hunt within. The Beast is a word which describes a demonic presence which awakens within every vampire after they are turned. It is often a force which acts in polar opposition to a vampire's own humanity, and is often responsible for the ruthless, horrifying acts a kindred may commit, if they allow the beast to willingly or unwillingly have its wicked way. The becoming is the process of a fledgling vampire progressing to the status of neonate or being a full vampire. Certain sects, primarily the Camarilla, will require the sire to receive the prince's blessing to deem their child ready for this process, to be free of their sire's protection and thus allowed to enter society. A blister is a certain vampire who has contracted a mortal disease, of which they spread upon every human they feed from. This disease can have a plethora of implications for kindred feeding within areas infected by a blister, as mortal diseases can infect the unliving. Within common vampiric expression, the blood refers to the semi-sentient substance which empowers a kindred, opposed to the blood they consume from either animals or humans. Such a general term is employed by most vampires, however elder kindred have a variety of older terms to describe their unique blood. The act of a blood bond is a common ritual within kindred society, which can be performed by two vampires or a vampire and a mortal. It is a mystical process which allows a vampire to assume mastership over another, by feeding their chosen recipient their blood thrice, compelling them to follow their will and asserting their dominance over them. A blood doll is a term which generally refers to mortals which derive addictive habits from receiving vampire bites and having their blood drained. The process of receiving these bites is extremely pleasurable, and thus blood dolls constantly seek out their next hit, offering blood to any kindred who will freely drink from them. It is a rather distasteful word, but not uncommonly used by many vampires who are apathetic to the plight of humans. The blood hunt is a commandment commonly employed by princes of the Camarilla. A blood hunt is a sentence which is given to kindred who have transgressed against the society's rules to a severe degree, and are thus stamped for final death at the fangs of their peers. A blood leech is a rather vulgar term which refers to vampires who depend on the blood of other kindred to slake their eternal thirst. This may be out of sheer necessity, or perhaps out of depraved desire, yet such vampires tend to receive a poor reputation for their choice in meals. A bloodline generally refers to a vampire's unique lineage, which flows from their sire, their grandsire, and so on. The term can also refer to vampires who have certain lineages which differ from the main clans, and often operate as clans within clans, with unique abilities and flaws which set them apart. The Book of Nod is a collection of ancient vampiric texts which which recall the mythical origins of Cainites. It has been assembled by various Nodist scholars over the many centuries. However, the most prominent edition was curated by the Malkavian Aristotle de Laurent, Cuthbert, Beckett, and others. It is a text which is sometimes venerated as highly as the Bible, and others simply a fairy tale which holds little substance. A butterfly is a vampire whom in their feeding practices fraternizes with mortal high society, mingling with the rich and famous, and feeding from their cliques. Canite is a term often used to identify or categorize vampires. It is a term often employed by elders, however it is not typically used 
used by those of the Camarilla or the Anarch movement. And some clans, such as the Banu Hakim and the Setites, also choose to not use this term. The term does have popular use within the Sabat, a sect who in most cases venerate the Dark Father. Those that choose to use this term to refer to vampires will often share sympathies with the mythical legends. The Camarilla, or Camarilla, is a sect within vampire society which is often deemed as the most powerful, or at least the best organized. They are the organization which promoted the use and enforcement of the six traditions, the most important being that of the Masquerade. Kanai is an outdated term which refers to mortals, often comparing them to an animalistic mass of herding creatures. It could also be considered as a vulgar term, employed by antique kindred who look down upon humans with an element of unsavory superiority. A Casanova is a vampire who picks their prey upon their ability to seduce them. In many cases, they do not only view this practice as a necessity, but often take great amounts of pleasure in manipulating their chosen meal, before feeding from them in small amounts, wiping their memory after the process. The old form term of Koshmar, derived from the Latin nightmare, is a vampire who preys upon the sleeping. Such vampires may employ disciplines such as dominate to induce horrifying nightmares within their chosen prey, before draining their fear-filled victim. What could be considered as a neologism preferred by younger vampires, the change is a supernatural process which occurs when a mortal undergoes the effects of vampirism, oftentimes being drained of their blood and fed a small amount of vitae of their sire. A term most widely used by the Tremere but is common in the vampiric vernacular, a chantry is often a location which acts as a base of operations for the Tremere clan in any given city. Due to the Tremere's rather unique hierarchy, this often acts as a communal haven and can also be used as a stronghold, a research station, or simply an archive for their studies. A term which falls under the old form, chast denotes the size and quality of a vampire's domain. The term child, plural children, is a mortal who has undergone the embrace, and is a word employed by a sire to refer to their offspring. It is often used in a derogatory or patronizing manner, as it is often associated with inexperience. Clans within the vampire world are inescapable, as all by the caitiff and the thin bloods belong to a certain clan, or an offshoot of a clan, which provides them with unique abilities within their bloodline and common heritage that they may find security within. They act as a group of vampires which share common characteristics, and it is often believed that these were created by the third generation, the Antediluvians. A term founded within the Dark Ages, consanguineous, is employed by elder kindred to refer to their lineage or a relation they share with another vampire which is strongly tied by blood. This may be a mutual sire, a grandsire, or a distant relative with common vitae. A coterie is a small group of vampires who have grouped together to serve a common purpose. This term is often used by the Camarilla to refer to assembled groups which enact the prince's orders. Other sects use very similar terms, but even those outside of the Camarilla may use this term to describe their own unique groups. The damned, simply put, is a rather nihilistic variation of the term Cainite or vampire. It comes from the so-called curse of Cain, placed upon vampires by God and thus damning them all. Diablerie is the much more common variant of the term Amaranth and depicts the exact same act of draining another vampire's soul. It is deemed as a deeply taboo act, and is widely condemned unless under very specific circumstances. One of the most important aspects of a vampire's life, if they are lucky, is domain. It generally refers to an area of a vampire's influence, and can be as small as a cul-de-sac and as large as an entire city. Domain is a fiercely sought over aspect of vampire life, and it is often only granted by elders or strong kindred who have already accumulated enough territory to distribute to trusted underlings. A domator, is specifically a vampire who owns a ghoul, and asserts their commands over it, whilst feeding them their own blood. As the term suggests, they are the master over their chosen ghoul, and the blood bond they share assumes them as the dominant party. What could be considered as a sarcastic term, or perhaps a euphemism of sorts, a donor is another term for a human, a vessel which may willingly or unwillingly give their blood to a vampire. The Duskborn, more commonly known as Thinbloods, are a more modern phenomena of vampire that are of particularly high generation. They do not hold traits of clan lineage, and they are perceived as treading the line between human and kindred. The term Duskborn may refer to their position between humanity and unlife, but it may also 
coincide with their ability to walk within certain hours of daylight, whilst not immediately succumbing to the final death. Elders, for many hundreds of years, were the pillars of vampiric society. To even be considered as an elder, you must have survived at least two centuries, and accumulated enough experience to warrant such a title. They are the most in tune with the eternal struggle, known also as the Jihad, and are well known for pulling the strings of younger vampires across the unliving world. Elysium is a practice upheld by the Camarilla, which marks a location which essentially acts as a neutral ground. Vampires may gather without fear of annihilation, as various acts are banned, such as the use of disciplines, conventional weaponry, etc, etc. These locations may be places where mortals and vampires intermingle, yet court activities and other secret events are kept entirely separate from the prying eyes of regular humans. A keeper of Elysium is usually present to maintain this level of peace and security, and assures the customs of Elysium are respected by every being present. A more widely used term for the change, the embrace is a word most vampires will know and understand well. Most sires will regard the term embrace as a deeply personal and intimate act, which in some ways is described as incredibly sexual, and in others akin to the pains of childbirth. A farmer is often a word associated with vampires who refuse to prey upon humans. Some kindred can indeed take blood and slake their thirst from animals, but this act is usually reserved for younger kindred and is often meaned by clans such as the clan Ventru, who have higher standards of blood consumption. Vampires may be immortal, yet the final death is always a prevalent and common factor of unlife. This is when a vampire ceases to be, either from being decapitated, burned, exposed to sunlight, or any other form of extremely lethal damage which a vampiric body can no longer sustain. Some believe that this results in a vampire turning to ash, but in fact, a vampiric body which reaches this stage reveals the true age of their being. In some cases, this may be a rotting corpse, in others, a pile of dust. A fledgling is the lowest rank of vampire in the common hierarchy, being newly created and often still under the protection of their sire. They are often tasked with firstly mastering the beast within them, to ensure that they are trustworthy of entering unlife as a true member of kindred society. A term in the old form, footpad is a variation of the term alley cat, a vampire who feeds from assaulting mortals from the lower echelons of society. Whilst many vampires know the term Gehenna, it is not a word often uttered in civil company. It refers to the apocalyptic event foreboded by ancient Cainite mythology, where the third generation rise from torpor, i.e. their long slumber, to devour every vampire within the world of darkness. The Sabbat, on the whole, are the biggest subscribers to such an event occurring, and constantly fight to prevent its start, believing they will stand with Cain against the antediluvians when the time arises. Generation is a common term which many vampires use, which often refers to the potency of their vitae, but also denotes the steps between them and the mythical first vampire. It is a common misconception that generation and age are intrinsically linked, and whilst lower generation vampires tend to be older on the whole, it is not uncommon to find exceptions in either case. A rather antiquated term, the gentry are vampires who tend to enjoy frequenting establishments of excess. In older times, these may have been pubs or brothels, but in more modern times, this tends to be nightclubs or red light districts. A ghoul is the result of a human partaking in a vampire's blood, becoming their minion under the confines of a blood bond. Whilst there are numerous downsides of becoming a ghoul and relinquishing your agency, a ghoul gains the benefit of adopting some of their domitor's powers, especially the ability to live a much longer lifespan and the limited ability to heal or even use a fraction of their master's disciplines. Golconda is a mythical state of being, which is said to have been told to Cain by the angel Gabriel, the Lord of Mercy. In some senses, Golconda Golconda is the only way to be forgiven by the divine as a vampire. Some even believe it is the only way for a vampire to reverse the effects of the embrace. Most, however, deem this state to be the transcended form of a vampire, having true mastery over the beast and balancing one's own urges. Whilst not every vampire is lucky enough to stake claim to domain, most vampires have a haven, a base or shelter where they can escape the destructive rays of the sun. Vamp
Vampires cannot feel the effects of narcotic substances or alcohol, and thus must drink from mortals who have consumed such things to experience the same sensation. A head is a rather vulgar term for a vampire who seeks out these already dosed mortals, or induces their own to receive their preferred fix. A headhunter is a variation of a blood leech, i.e. a vampire who seeks out the blood of other kindred to satiate their thirst. Humanitas, whilst a term within the old form, describes the extent to which a kindred maintains their humanity. Whilst it may be assumed a vampire abandons their human traits once the embrace is complete, a vampire's unlife is one of constant struggle between their beast and their humanity. Losing it can result in becoming a depraved being, giving greater power to this beast which will always seek to override the body. Whilst many vampires know them as a fable, the Inkonu are a rumoured sect of ancient Methuselah who manipulate the Jihad. They are said to have removed themselves entirely from vampiric society, and are unbound to the ties of blood. The neologism juice box is a rather common euphemism for a human, but is often used by vampires who regard their mortal counterparts as solely vessels for consuming blood. It is a vulgar term, simply for its dehumanising effect, and may be employed by vampires who share similar sentiments towards mortals. The Jihad, or the Eternal Struggle, is referred to in many cases as a great war between the generations of kindred. The elders of Canite society manipulate the younger vampires within this great game, weaponizing them as pawns in a secret war which defies much standard logic. It pitches sect against sect, vampire against vampire, in an ever snowballing conflict which secures the elders' dominance, whilst whittling away at the younger generations of vampires. Kindred, similar to the term of canite or vampire, is a word popularized by the Camarilla to refer to a singular vampire, or vampire kind as a whole. It was a term developed between the 15th and 16th centuries, after the Anarch Revolution vault, and it is said that its usage was primarily to separate a vampire from their mythical origins, choosing to use a more humane term for their existence rather than directly associating themselves with Cain or any other mythical foundations. The term kine is a popular word which describes mortals, often in a scornful manner which describes their masses as a herd, yet less severely than the archaic term kanai. Within the Camarilla, or even wider kindred society, the phrase kindred and kine is often used to describe describe all people across the world, both living and unliving. The kiss is a rather odd euphemism which circulates in common usage to describe the mundane event of a vampire biting and feeding from a mortal. The relevance of using such an intimate word to describe such an action is due to the pleasurable feelings it often creates within both a mortal and a vampire, with a mortal specifically feeling great amounts of ecstasy when they receive the fangs of a vampire upon their skin. An eye for an eye. Lex talionis is the old form term for the vampiric system of punishing transgression against internal laws. It is the law of retaliation, and is often said to be the foundation of decrees such as the blood hunt. Almost all sects abide by this principle, and enact their retribution against any kindred which defy their rule or actively transgress against them. The term lick is a neologism which finds common use within the Anarch movement, or within younger circles of vampires. It generally refers to kindred as a whole, yet instead of describing them as a mythical or humane entity, it describes the very act of a vampire licking the fang marks left after feeding, to seal the wound and thus their wicked deeds. Lien is a term founded in the old form, which refers to the compliance of kine within a vampire's domain. This may indeed refer to how the mortals within this area interact with their supposed vampire overlords, and how willing they are to abide by their jurisdiction. Lien, in this sense, also measures how well a vampire is integrated within the mortal population of their domain. A term which has dropped out of common use, the life, is a euphemism which describes very plainly mortal blood. The term lineage may well describe a bloodline, yet it is more commonly used by elder vampires to speak of one's general line, or their vampiric family tree, i.e. their sire, their grandsire, and so on. Lupine, or lupines, is a term used mostly by kindred in isolation to refer to their natural enemy, the werewolves. Kindred and Garu are in essence biologically opposed to each other, with werewolves representing the beastly force of life and vampires being the epitome of death. Many werewolves regard vampires as creations of the worm, and they have often clashed and warred throughout the many millennia of their shared existence. 
Lush is generally a more accepted term for a head, a vampire who seeks out mortals who are typically drugged or drunk for their sustenance. Integral to the masquerade, the term mask refers to a vampire's mortal identity, of which they must use to evade suspicion or the prying eyes of hunters or similar entities. It is key to most aspects of kindred life, from feeding to simply blending in amongst their prey. Most vampires know of the masquerade, not all abide by it, but it is a mutual law which is upheld by most sects, all by the Sabbat and others which abide by vampire superiority. It asserts that vampires outside of their own internal society do not exist. It is perhaps the most important tradition employed by the Camarilla, and ensures the society's survival. The foundations of the masquerade predate the Convention of Thorns, and variations of the law have existed to aid vampires in their survival, but its popularity increased within the Inquisition era of the 15th century, where the masquerade was deemed vital for the survival of all kindred. A Methuselah typically refers to a vampire's side into the fourth or fifth generation. They are ancient vampires who have existed for a millennia or more, and are rumoured to no longer participate in kindred society, and are suspected of manipulating it from afar instead. Some Methuselah are attributed to creating their own unique bloodlines, which deviate subtly from the standards set by the 13 clans. Most vampires within the world of darkness are neonates. These are not entirely inexperienced kindred by any means, but they are deemed as new by the elders. They are more more adept than their fledgling counterparts, but the nightmares of vampiric unlife may still be mysteries to them. They create the backbone of most sects, and are often employed to carry out the dirty work for their higher-ups. They are, in essence, expendable, but with the promise of greatness if they survive their cruel existence. Papillon is an antiquated term used by kindred to refer to a hunting ground where crime is rife and mortal disappearance is not an uncommon occurrence. This may be a part of a civilization where broth gambling houses and places of ill repute are popular, and where heinous crimes, even those committed by the supernatural, are overlooked as mundane events. These are indeed prized hunting grounds. Portillon is an old form term used to describe the level of security or protection a chosen domain has. This tends to be protection against other kindred wishing to stake their claim on another's territory, but this also extends to external forces as well. Praxis is integral for a prince of a given domain to enact their will. Within the Camarilla, praxis is the right entrusted to a prince to govern. It also refers to a prince's matters of policy, their orders, political mechanisms, nations or changes within the court or domain. One of the highest positions of power a Camarilla vampire can ascend to, a prince is a non-gendered term for a vampire that has been granted the authority to stake claim to a vast expanse of domain, usually a city. A prince is the undisputed ruler of such a territory, and they are entrusted to maintain the six traditions whilst also using their own power to work in the ivory tower's best interests. Similar roles are also found within the Anarch movement and the Sabbat, seen in both barons and archbishops Respectively. The term progeny refers to a vampire's childer collectively. Some kindred may sire many childer in their unlife. Some sects allow vampires to sire freely, with the Sabbat even utilizing mass embraces to bolster their numbers. However, within the Camarilla, progeny is a highly controlled tradition, wherein you must have the prince's permission to sire childer. The rack is a neologism which is the modern equivalent of papillon. Employed by younger vampires, the rack simply refers to that part of town where all manners of crime are rife. Similar to the mortal term, a rake is a vampire who frequents the rack, and is often a kindred who indulges in debauchery and immoral conduct, amongst those of a similar nature. They frequent this part of town primarily for feeding. Similar to the term domitor, a regnant is a vampire who holds a blood bond over another, usually a kindred. Vampires are not vulnerable to becoming bound to another vampire willingly or unwillingly through consuming their vitae, and thus some kindred become thralls, much like a ghoul, after partaking in this ritual. A retainer may often refer to a ghoul who offers a great amount of protection and assurance for their vampiric master. A pop culture depiction of such a character can be seen in Dracula's Renfield, a mortal devoted to their supernatural master. Many vampires may have multiple retainers 
containers within their unlife, as they serve an important role ensuring their safety, both at night, yet more importantly in the day. Whilst centuries ago, the Sabbat were regarded as Anarchs, fighting against the powers of the Elders, in modern days, they are dogmatic extremists, who believe in the ancient vampiric myths, primarily that of the coming of Gehenna. They reject humanity and often believe in vampire supremacy, and fight tooth and nail to ensure that opposing sects do not interfere with their goal of attaining freedom from the blood ties of the Elders. In the end times, they believe they will stand with Cain against the Antediluvians, and thus they revere themselves as warriors of the Sword of Cain. A Sandman is very similar to that of a Koshmar, in that they are a vampire which feeds upon a sleeping victim. However, a Sandman is a more common variant within modern nights, in that they may not have nefarious intentions when they feed upon their sleeping victims. The Second Inquisition is a worldwide conspiracy composed of various mortal organizations which treat vampires as a terrorist threat. They are often silent, secret, yet always watching, collaborating with various global organizations from the CIA to the Vatican to seek out and destroy vast populations of kindred. They have left their mark upon vampire society by employing scorched earth policies underneath the noses of regular mortals, and are perhaps the greatest threat to vampires in current times. A sect, in simple terms, is a large group of kindred who are united under a common philosophy. Each sect differs in their goals and morals, which create tension between each other. Sects may lay claim to vast territories, which may overlap with rivaling factions, which results in the jihad we see play out every night. The term sire is used both to refer to a kindred of which has created a new vampire, or the act of a vampire conducting the embrace. To sire, or siring, can be used to refer to the latter whilst a child may refer to their own creator as their sire. Slumming is a vulgar argot which refers to the practice of a kindred feeding from the homeless, with one who regularly partakes in such feeding practices being referred to as a slummer. A thin blood or duskborn is a vampire of high generation, being that of the 14th or 15th generations, who does not experience the curse of Cain in a similar manner to that of their lower generation counterparts. They are often deemed as suspicious or mysterious by most within vampire society, and they are even an omen of the end times. An elusive term of the old form, the third mortal, refers to Cain, who was allegedly the first child of Adam and Eve. A thrall is any being, kindred or ghoul, who has partaken in another vampire's blood thrice, becoming fully bloodbound to them. As the word may allude, a thrall is burdened by their regnants or domitor's will, and thus lacks significant agency to act within their own best interests. A neolog Logism, turf, is simply a word for domain, often employed by vampires within the Anarch movement to describe their own patch of land. The term unbound is used to describe any vampire who resides outside of society, or even the confines of a city. This may be through sheer ignorance of the unliving world, or an active decision to not participate within it. The Camarilla tend to associate such vampires with the Anarch movement, but this is usually not the case. A vessel is any container which holds blood which nourishes a vampire. Usually this is a mortal, but a vessel can describe objects such as a blood bag or flasks which may maintain substantial blood. Many elder vampires refer to their own supernatural blood as vitae. Vitae is unique to vampires, yet it cannot be produced internally by itself. Thus a vampire must consume vast amounts of blood within its unlife to upkeep the amounts of vitae within their body. Vitae is constantly lost through rousing the blood, which is required to awaken and use utilize certain vampiric powers. Whelp, as the word might hint, is a derogatory term used by elder kindred to refer to neonates or fledglings in moments of anger or disappointment. It is often only employed when a sire speaks to their child, and often comes across as a patronizing term to bestow upon their progeny. Another term within the old form, a wig, is a derogatory word for a vampire who possesses a fondness or profound interest in modern trends, particularly that of fashion or culture. Whilst most vampires will never see such a creature, a white is the final form of the beast. Once a vampire loses all of their humanity, the beast will always claw to take control. When a vampire loses this internal battle, the beast will manifest its true form within their body, destroying their humanity and consuming them entirely as a horrific creature of pure animalistic rage. Its hunger will be insatiable, and it will only seek to kill, no longer abiding by any human conventions or any morals at all. They are 
are assumed dead entirely at the point of their transformation, and are only fit for destruction. Every vampire has the ability to become a white, and perhaps it is only a matter of time until a kindred slowly degrades into this monster of pure nightmares. Thank you for watching, this was a very interesting video to make, and it took a fair amount of time to compile all of this information from glossaries across a couple of editions. Do let me know what you thought of this video, and what you would like to see next. If you are watching in January, I am currently on vacation until February the 20th, but I have big plans for this year, so if you feel so inclined, perhaps leave a like or even subscribe as it helps the channel immensely. Also, a huge thank you to World Anvil once more for sponsoring this video. It would mean the world if you could check their link in the description below. And so, until next time, stay safe and do not wander naively into the night.